that are full of jewels. Then, Amohishi Karisho Kya Kaam. And I have to say, what is the use of all jewels and gold? Then, Amohishi Karisho Kya Kaam. But no use of all jewels and things. And he took that basket and throw it in Jamuna. And then anyone did not saw her where she went. Where she went? Where she went? She became mad after Krishna. And perhaps. He left her, she left her body and went to Guruk Vrindavan oh, in the form of mother. Gaur Pramad. Now, a Pareki has. What we love after? Brahma Mohan? No, no. Dhenukasu. Dhenukasu? Oh. Eh? Oh. I want to go to up to Gopis. So, you should explain about Brahma Mohan Vita. Thank you, Ramchandra. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnana Jamsalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Gurave Gaur Chandraya Radhikaya Itadalaya Krishna, Krishna Bhaktaya, Tadu Bhaktaya Namo Namaha, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Ganadha, Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Everyone chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So in this way, we're hearing about the childhood pastimes of Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who in Vrindavan Dham appears like a beautiful little child of Mother Yashoda. So, this pastime uh, of Krishna's age, where he grew a little bit older, and now he had a desire that he wanted to go out into the forest, because Krishna is a cowherd boy, born in the family of Gopas. What do Gopas do? What do the Gopas do? Uh, they have thousands and thousands and lakhs of cows and calves, and they're completely uh, engaged in looking after the cows, moving from one part of Braj to another part of Braj. So Sri Krishna, in his uh, young boyhood, now he had desire, that, and he wanted to go out into the forest for herding the young calves. Uh, and so there was a, a special ceremony uh, called Gopastami where Sri Krishna, now for the first time, he went into the forest of Vrindavan with his young little cowherd boyfriends, his sakas. And now he was going to be herding all the calves, uh, the newly born calves. So actually Mother Yashoda was very much in anxiety about Krishna going into the forest. And she tried in many, many ways to convince Krishna, there is no need for you to go into the forest for herding cows. Because we have so many servants, and there is no necessity. You are the prince 
of Braja. Nanda Baba is the king of Braja. You do not need to personally go. And Krishna was insisting and insisting, No Maya, no Maya, I want to go. I want to, it will be so much fun, I want to go. So finally, Mother Yashoda had to relent. And she insisted that Krishna should, uh, at least going into the forest, he should wear sandals on his feet because there will be so many little sharp, uh, jagged rocks and stones and he will, his, his soft feet are like butter uh, and maybe he should also keep an umbrella over his head like this. But Krishna told, no, no, how I can do? All the calves, they are my friends. They are not wearing shoes, so I also have to go barefooted into the forest. And they are not keeping any umbrella. So in this way, finally, uh, this ceremony uh, was uh, performed that Sri Krishna would go into the forest with his cowherd friends. And every day in the morning time, Sri Krishna would go playing on his flute, passing from out of the houses and joining together with all his cowherd boyfriends. And all of his calves would come here. There are thousands and thousands of cowherd boyfriends and calves and they would go marching together, dancing and singing into the forest of Vrindavan. And Mother Yashoda would come and watch, and all, all on the side of the road, of the pathway leading to the forest, all the bridge bossies, they would also gaze and look at the beautiful form of Krishna, and how he was going with his cowherd friends, playing on his flute. So in this way, now Krishna went into the forest. But Mother Yashoda and all the other mothers of the other cowherd boys, they would prepare beautiful lunch bags and, and the cowherd boys would take these on their cowherding sticks into the forest like a sack, like a cloth sack. And inside they would put so many wonderful preparations that they would make out of fruits and yogurt and rice. And in this way the cowherd boys would go into the forest very happily and merrily and they would go to take their lunch. So, one day, when Krishna was going into the forest in this way, uh, he came to a clearing area with very beautiful meadows and beautiful grasses, and he told his cowherd friends, Oh, this is a wonderful place for us to sit down and have our lunch together. So, let all the cows and let all the calves graze nearby here. There are very beautiful fresh green grasses for them to chew on. So let them graze just nearby. And all of you please sit here. Oh, yes. And then, okay. Well, just prior to this pastime, Krishna had also been herding the cows in the forest, and there was one demon named Aghasur, who was also sent by Kangs. Yes. Yeah. So this Aghasur demon was in the form of a huge, gigantic snake. And uh, he was uh, in, in the he was coming there, and he wanted to swallow Krishna and to kill Krishna and the cowherd boys. So there's a beautiful description in Srimad Bhagavatam how Krishna or the, all the cowherd boys marched into the mouth of this huge gigantic serpent, and Krishna also went inside, uh, and then the serpent closed his mouth. But by Krishna's mystic power, he actually rescued all the cowherd boys. And he uh, expanded himself and killed the demon in, by choking him. And the demon's soul, his jivatma, came out from the top of his head. And when Krishna came out uh, and hovered in the sky, and then when Krishna came out, this, uh, so, this shining luminous uh, light in the sky, the soul of this Agasura demon, came and entered into the lotus feet of Krishna. So in this way, uh, this pastime went on, but it was actually the same, uh, very same day as this pastime was being enacted in the forest of Vrindavan, where Krishna was herding the cow, herd, uh, the, cow the calves. Brahma was looking, and Brahma Ji was in the sky, and he was observing because Lord Brahma likes to see. He is a pure devotee of Krishna, and he relishes and tastes all the beautiful pastimes as Krishna is growing up, he's observing. So when he saw this amazing pastime of Agasur, uh, a desire rose within his heart, because actually Yoga Maya came and uh, caused Lord Brahma to have some slight doubt in his heart. Who is this young cowherd boy? Brahma, when he saw that wonderful thing, 
how beautiful and wonderful. Mm -hmm. I want to see some other parts yes. yes. and then yes. you perhaps no. forget and know. <laughs> <laughs> so Brahmaji, he saw this happen and Yoga Maya caused him to desire to see more beautiful pastimes of Krishna. So when Krishna, now we're returning back to this previous scene, when Krishna was sitting in the, uh, the open meadow there, all the cowherd boys, they, they sat in front of Krishna in small circles and bigger circles and bigger circles and there were hundreds and thousands of cowherd boys all surrounding Krishna circularly and they're sitting on the, on the forest uh, ground and they brought out their lunch bags. There they had rocks which were in the shape of little tallies like plates and they also had leaves and in this way they brought up their lunches and set it in front of them, all sitting and facing Sri Krishna. Now they began very happily taking their lunch and all the cowherd boys were looking at the beautiful face of Krishna as they were taking their lunch. But the most amazing thing was that every cowherd boy was seeing that Krishna was personally looking at them. Thousands and thousands of coward boys were all experiencing that Krishna was personally looking at them as he was taking his, uh, his meal. And uh, in this way, Krishna was showing that he is the absolute center and he is the soul of every soul within everyone's heart. So anyone that wants to reciprocate with Krishna, he can reciprocate with unlimited souls, unlimited persons, and they can have personal direct relationship with Krishna. So now all the cowherd boys who had so much sakya bhav, so much uh, fraternal affection for Krishna, they began playing and exchanging food and some of the cowherd boys were also putting the different foodstuffs in one another's mouths and even with Krishna they were playing, oh my dear brother, please taste this, this is so good. They would take it out of their own mouths, put it into Krishna's mouth and vice versa. So in this way, very intimately, they're playing with the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. So in the meantime, Lord Brahma was observing all of this. And now he thought, I should test to see, is he really uh, the Supreme Lord? So now Lord Brahma decided to pay, play a trick with his own mystic power. Uh, so Brahmaji is the creator of the universe. He has tremendous mystical powers. So with his mystic powers, he saw that the calves uh, were grazing nearby and gradually the calves, he made them wander some distance away and then he kidnapped those, ki those calves and he placed them inside of a cave nearby. So in the meantime, Sri Krishna and the cowherd boys, they noticed, where are the calves? They were grazing here. So now, uh, Sri Krishna told to the cowherd boys, oh, don't worry, don't disturb yourselves. I will personally go and I'll search out all the calves. You just stay here and continue having your lunch. So in the meantime, Krishna went and looked for the calves everywhere. But while he was gone, Lord Brahma came and he also, by his mystic power, he stole the cowherd boys from that place and he also placed them in that same cave where the calves were. So when Krishna was looking here and there, just like a human child, he was not able to find the calves. He came back to that place and he also saw that the cowherd boys were not there. So one quality of the Supreme Lord is that although he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he's Sarvagyata, all-knowing, but when he's enacting his leelas in Vrindavan, he is like Mukdata, that means like a, a little boy who knows nothing. So Krishna was thinking, oh, what will happen? If I return back at the end of the day without the calves and the cowherd boys, oh, then Mother Yashoda, she'll become very upset with me and the other mothers will also. And also Krishna understood that it was actually Brahmaji playing such a trick. So now Sri Krishna, he expanded his own self uh, as every single cowherd boy and every single calf with all their particular individual characteristics and qualities and the colors of their cloth and the, their gestures, their voices, every single thing, their nature, their personalities, everything, he completely uh, expanded himself identical to every one of them. And in this way, 
Shri Krishna, yes, and, the, and all the caps in, in their individual colors and everything. So now Shri Krishna continued in his way during in the forest of Vrindavan, playing with the calves and the cowherd boys, which were actually his own self. So now at the end of the day, Krishna came into the back into the uh, Vrindavan town. And when he came back into the Vrindavan town, now in the form of the calves, he entered into every cow shed. And in the form of the cowherd boys, he entered into every house in Braj. So, actually what was going on here? Oh, the, all the residents of Vrindavan, the elderly cowherd ladies and cowherd men, they actually love Krishna even more than their own sons. This is the nature of Krishna Prem. All the bridge bossies, they love Krishna more than their own life and soul. And so they had the opportunity because it was their desire to have actually Krishna as their own son. Now their desire became fulfilled. They're actually able to breastfeed their Sri Krishna in the form of their own child and to look after him. And also all the calves, the cows, they also love Krishna even more than they love their own calves. So now during this time, uh, the calves were coming into the cow shed and they were drinking directly from the udders of the mother cows. And in this way the mother cows also had their desires fulfilled. And also during this time period, actually, Sri Krishna was performing this Leela for a period of one year. And during that one year's time, why was it one year? Because Lord Brahma, when he uh, went away from that place after stealing the calves, he wanted to return to his abode, Brahmalok. And when he went to Brahmalok, when he came to the entryway to his palace, his palace guards, they stopped him there. And they said, you cannot enter here. He says, what are you talking about? I'm who your master. You? Who are you? Yeah, they said, who are you? And he said, no, I'm your master, I'm Brahma. They said, no, 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 you are not Brahma. We know, because our master, he is there in the palace. And he told us that someone is going to come here as an imposter, disguised as myself. Don't allow him to enter. <laughs> so in that way, Lord Brahma started to think, oh, what's going on here? And now he began to consider that someone's mystic power was greater than his own. He immediately returned back to Vrindavan. And there he saw that Krishna was playing uh, with all the coward boys. And he was sitting in the same area and oh, taking his lunch. You forget one thing. Balram Prabhu. Yeah, I'm coming to that. Oh. I'm coming. First Balram Prabhu, then Brahma. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm getting this a little bit mixed up. <laughs> okay, so Gurudev is reminding me that Baladev Prabhu, on that day... Only three, four days was to complete one year. Days yes. Days. Yeah. I'm, I'm coming to that. <laughs> okay, so Baladev, Baladev Prabhu, he noticed after about three or four days before one year was completed. Why one year? Because Lord Brahma's time period is very, very long. He lives for billions and billions of years, trillions of years actually. So when Lord Brahma had gone away back to his Brahma Lok and returned back, it was actually only a moment by earthly time, cal I mean by Brahma's time calculation, but it was actually one year by the earthly time calculation. So during that one year, Krishna was performing this Leela of expanding as the calves and the cowherd boys. And so a few days just before one year had finished, uh, Baladev Prabhu, he noticed one day a very peculiar occurrence. They were out her herding the cows. And Baladev Prabhu, who, who, who was actually not with Krishna on that day that he expanded himself because it was his birthday and he was kept back home. So he didn't observe how the calves were stolen and so forth. But now Balaram was noticing that one day when the, when the cowherd men were herding the cows on the top of the hill and they, uh, the cows noticed at the bottom of the hill, of Govardhan Hill, that their calves were there uh, being herded by Krishna, 
The cows suddenly became completely overwhelmed with motherly affection for their calves, and they started running very quickly down the hill to go to their calves. And the cowherd men, who were trying to control the cows, they were also running after the cows to control them. But when the cows reached the bottom and they saw their calves, now the cows began to lick their calves, and they were so absorbed in maternal affection for their calves, and it was peculiar to Balaram. Why? Because these calves were the older calves. They were a year old. And the younger calves, which the cows usually have more affection for, they were showing more affection for the older calves. And now Balaram began to think, what is this? And then also, when he saw the cowherd men who were chasing the cows, and the cowherd men, they, when they saw their, cowherd, their sons, they also became overwhelmed with uh, but, uh, paternal affection, and they began embracing their sons and smelling their heads with tears in their eyes. So Balaram was noticing that actually all these, this, this manifestation is the same kind of love that they actually have for Krishna. Because he knew that all the Brijabhasis love Krishna more than they love their own offspring. So when he noticed this, he began to think, and actually, who is Baladev? Baladev is Krishna himself, an expansion of Krishna. But because Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan, and Baladev is his first expansion, if Sri Krishna, who is Ishwara Parama, the supreme controller of all controllers, if Krishna does not want to reveal something in his Leela, even Baladev Prabhu cannot know. So Baladev Prabhu, at that time, he thought, oh, this must be the mystic power of my younger brother. So he went and approached him, and then Krishna revealed to him what had taken place that Lord Brahma had stolen, and he had expanded like this. So now, when Brahma returned back, actually, well, well, during that one year period, also there was one other thing that happened, and how Sri Krishna fulfilled the desires of his eternal devotees. Because all the young little gopi girls, who were very child, very young children, they also loved Krishna secretly within their hearts. And they had such a desire uh, to have Krishna as their husband. So many of them were rishis and personified Vedas in previous lives. And they had also done so many austerities. So they wanted to have Krishna as their very own husband. So during that one year, uh, Bhagavati Rishi, was it Bhagavati Rishi? He advised that this is the most auspicious time, astrologically, that all the young gopi girls should be betrothed to their future husbands, the young coward boys. So in this way, they all became betrothed to Sri Krishna himself in the form of all the coward boys. And in thus, they were able to fulfill their heart's desire of having Krishna as their eternal uh, husband. So now, when, when Sri Krishna came back, when, uh, when Lord Brahma came back from Brahma Lok, and he saw uh, that the cowherd boys were there, and they were enjoying their lunch just like before he had kidnapped them and taken them away. But then he thought, well, let me check and see in the cave. Are they still there in the cave? So he went and he looked in the cave, and he found that they were also there in the cave. And then he thought, how is this possible? And he went back to that place, and he saw they're still there also. So then, with his four heads, he looked in both directions, and he saw that they're both in both places simultaneously. And now he began to think, oh, I've made a mistake. This person's mystic power is much, much greater than mine. He has defeated my mystic power. He has even expanded himself as me and gone to Brahmaloka. So now Lord Brahma began to feel uh, perturbed in his heart that he had committed some offense against his master, Sri Krishna. So at that time, Lord Brahma, he came down and he searched for Krishna in the forest. Sri Krishna was in a secluded place in the forest. <clears throat> and when he came there, oh, he saw all the coward boys were lined up in that meadow area and Krishna revealed to Lord Brahma by showing him the Vishnu forms coming, beautiful effulgent thousands and millions of Vishnu forms coming from all the coward boys who were sitting there, from all the calves, 
from their cowherd sticks, from their turbans, from every little bit of paraphernalia that they had. Sri Krishna himself, in the form of his Vishnu forms, had manifested in front of Lord Brahma, all super effulgent and beautiful and golden crowns. And in this way, Lord Brahma could see that actually Sri Krishna, he had personally expanded as all these cowherd boys. So in this secluded place, now Lord Brahma came down and saw Krishna in the forest. And on his swan carrier, he came down to the earth and he alighted from his swan carrier and immediately approached Sri Krishna who was standing there just like a little cowherd boy <clears throat> with a lump of foodstuffs in his hand like a little ladu in his hand and one of his covered friends leaning on his shoulder and this big huge form of Lord Brahma with golden crowns came and he laid before Krishna doing full dandavat pranams then he arose with tears in his eyes and now he began to speak his Brahma Stuti his beautiful prayers glorifying Sri Krishna and there is one prayer in which he is this no thank you You should see that there were three shades of Krishna coward and cows. One real who cows are grazing and cow cowherd boys surrounding Krishna. They were taking prasadam. Those who were in backside also they are seeing in front of Krishna. So enjoying and laughing, joking, they are taking prasadam. They were real. Maya covered them. Yoga Maya. And one said, Brahma wanted to, uh, Brahma took them and kept in the cave. Cows and cowherd boys. Oh, they were created by Yoga Maya. And one, the expansion of Krishna himself. <coughs> so, three sets of cowherd eyes, cow, cows, and Krishna and Gualva were there. Now, Achyutananda will try to do his duty, Brahma's duty. Drama place should be ready. Hare Krishna Hare Rama, please prepare for drama. Om Gyan Timidan Dasya Gyanan Janashalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama First of all, I offer my most respectful obeisances and Jim Rupanu Gachari Bar Paramarath Hitam Shri Guru Pada Padma Om Vishnu Pada Parma Skurya Gachari Rashto Darsha Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Naran Goswami Maharaj So, Brahmaji is praying to Rajendranandan Shamsundar Bhagavan Shri Krishna He is on his knees because he has just performed this entire Vila and he is praying toward Krishna. No mediate Ambrava Pushe Taridam Varaya Gunjavatam Saparipit Chalasan Mukhaya Vanya Sraje Kavalavita Vishana Venu Lakshma Shri Mirdupade Pashupanga Jaya. So Brahmaji is saying, No mediate Ambrava Pushe. Krishna, you are India. You are worshipable. Come back in one minute, huh? don't panic. Not any other avatar of yours, not any other jiva, nobody else is idya. You are idya. You are worshipable. So he's saying, no media te abhravapushe. And what form is this that is worshipable? That form, which is like a storm who is dark like a thundercloud and is covered with yellow cloth, pitam varbastra. That is like a thunderbolt. 
And you are wearing nice, beautiful earrings made of gunja, gunja flower. And they are swinging on your ears. Gunja with thumbs of body, big chillas and mukaya. On your neck, there is a beautiful forest um, garland made of forest flowers. And and you have in your hand a horn for calling the cows a morsel of food. And your arm is resting on the side of one of your gopas. Not only this, Lakshma Shri Mridupadi Pashupanga Jaya. So, you have so many auspicious signs and symbols on your lotus feet. So, unto you, O son of Nanda Maharaj, I am offering my obeisances. So, Chakravarti Thakur explains that here Brahmaji is saying that these wonderful earrings of Gunjamala found only in Braj and this forest flower garland, uh, which is of, made of flowers found only in Braj, these wonderful decorations are superior to anything found in Vaikuntha. So Brahmaji is offering this prayer to Krishna and establishing that this form of Prajendarandan, Shamsundar, Brahmaji, Krishna, this is the supreme form of the Lord. Nothing else. So then Brahmaji continues. Jnane prayasam udapasya namanta eva jivanti san mukharitam bhavadiya vartam sthane stita shudhikatam tanuvag manodhe je praya shiva jita jito kesita istho. He says, those who give up this path of impersonal jnana, jnana prayasam, giving up this path of jnana which leads to impersonal liberation, Brahma Jyoti. And they are doing obeisances, namanta eva, they are offering their obeisances. And they live their life offering their obeisances to those who speak this harikatha, Bhavadiya Vartam, those topics concerning you. Being, they offer their respectful obeisances and they live their lives hearing these topics from the, the, your devotees. Jivanti San Mukharitam, Bhavadiya Vartam, Sthani Sthita Shuddhi Gatam, Tanu Vag Manogir, Je Prayasho Jitopya Sita Shalokyam. And in doing so, they themselves conquer you who are otherwise unconquerable within these three worlds. Then Brahmaji continues, Shreya Sritim Bhakti Mudasya Devi Bho Krishyanti Te Kevala Bhotalak Te Te Shamasa Kleshala Eva Shishya Te Nanya Tita Tust Stul Tushava Ghatina so, then he is establishing that of all ways to worship you, Sri Krishna, Bhakti is the highest. There is Karmakarn, Dhyanakarn, so many different ways of worshipping you, but this path of Bhakti, this is the highest. This gives one the highest benefit. Shreya Sritim, Bhakti Mudasya Devi Bhagavad is in the first chapter, he said, what is the highest benefit? Shavana Kadivish is asking, so Shreya Sritim Bhakti Mudasya Devi Bhakti is the highest activity which provides the highest welfare for man. And those who give this up, Shreya Sritim Bhakti Mudasya Devi Po, Kleshala Evo, Bodha Lakta Evo, then they only experience Klesh, frustration, and uh, untoward happenings. So, the those who give up this path of bhakti, then they only are experiencing klesha. <laughs> and they do not receive anything from giving up this path of bhakti. And those who go for the path of jnana, instead of performing the path of bhakti, they only experience klesha. Misery. So, and not only that, not only do they just experience misery, but they don't attain anything from this, following this path of jnana. Just like someone is beating the husk of rice, where they will not achieve, uh, attain any rice, they will only attain just wasted effort. So Brahmaji is praying so many different prayers. 
So there's one more. There's many. Anyway, Brahmaji is offering like a garland of so many prayers to Bhagavan Shri Krishna. So, that, O Krishna, those who only wait for your uh, only wait for your mercy in any situation, anything that happens to your bhaktas, good or bad, they who consider it only your mercy, that they who come from to samikshamana, punjai evatmakritam vipakam, they consider these things to be the fruit of their own previous activities. And hridva bhupurbhir vidadhan namaste, with their heart, their words, and their uh, mind, and their body, they offer pranams unto you. Hridva bhupurbhir vidadhan namaste, jivetayo mukti pade sadhayavak, jivetayo bhakti pade sadhayavak. That they are the ones who are entitled to receive mukti pade, which means liberation from bondage of this material world. And they are entitled, entitled to taste this fruit of prema bhakti. So, apatite devapadam buddha. Gautaki? Gokulepi? That is wrong. Janaka Yeva Janaka. What? Brahma prayed to Sikhrishna. Aho Tithanna Prajago Ramanna Stanna Mritam Pita Mativate Muda Jasam Vibhu Oh, in this Praja Gopi, they are Praja Gopi, Mother Gopi and Cow, they are very, very virtue. Because Sri Krishna is Supreme Lord, He came from Golos Vrindavan, manifest His sweetness, Lila. Also, he had affluence mood, but he forgot now in Brajabhumi. Brajabhumi is ocean of love, praying samudra. So, Sri Krishna forgot all things. And he, like ordinary boy, and he is playing with Brajab, with Brajabhasi and showing his sweetness Lila. In this way, Brahma prayed to Brajabhumi, Mother Gopi. They are very fortunate. Also, cows, they are very fortunate. Sri Krishna always drinks in their breast milk. So, we are offering so many, many fire sacrifices. We are offering out the many, many persons. They are doing fire sacrifice. Sri Krishna is satisfied. Is he taking out the eating or not? We can't understand. But here, he manifests himself. And he is like child, a childhood little boy and always playing with them and drinking their milk. So again, when will we be? That time, so they are not giving milk. So in this way, he becomes cow, small cow and baby child and drinking milk. So they are very fortunate. In this way, that very bhagya me a janma kimapata vyam. Jat Gopriya Pi Kata Mantri Rajo Pi Sikha. Jat Jivitam Tum Nikilam Bhagavan Mukunda Stadhapi Jat Padaraja Spruti Mithya Mi. Oh, this is my life. Will be virtual. I will be very lucky. 
when I will take in praise of Rumi, I will take birth in praise of Rumi. If some, some part of praise of Rumi in Gokul and anywhere, but this is no chance, not possible, so I pray. I will be stone, little stone, and small hills. Then, Brajavasi, Brajakopi, they are bhavo, sometimes coming here. And they are keeping their feet. Keeping the feet and rubbing their then I, I can take their feet dust. In this way, my life will be. So I pray, Jat Jivitam Tam Nikhilam Kalavana Mukunda. Mukunda Sri Krishna is Mukunda. And he is the giver of liberation. He is the giver of pure love and affection, pure bhakti. Also, always he is very happy with Brajavasi. And he is playing with Brajavasi, giving his sweetness, Lila. So, Jat Jivitam Tam Nikhilam Bhagavana Mukunda. All Prajavasis, they are like body, then Sri Krishna is their heart and their life. Also, if Prajavasis is their life, heart, their life, also Sri Krishna is body. If body and life, both are, if you are, they cannot leave each other, without each other. So in this way, Prajavasis, heart, mind, everything for Sri Krishna. Without Sri Krishna, without Sri Sri Krishna, they cannot live. So, Jat Jivitam Tum Nikhilam Bhagavana Mukunda, Stadda Vijat Padaraja Shruti Vikya Viva. All Vedas, Shruti, they are watching, all of it, they are doing austerities for Sri Krishna's feet dust. They want their Sri Krishna's feet dust. So I should pray to Brajavasi, they are, I can touch their feet dust, then my life will be successful. Oh, In this way, Oh Bhagyam, Oh Bhagyam, Oh Bhagyam, Nanda Gopa Prajauka Sam, Janmitram Paramanandam, Purna Brahma Sanatana. He is Purna Brahma Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. But, Oh Bhagyam, Oh Bhagyam, Nanda Gopa Prajauka Sam. All Brajavasis, Nanda Maharaj, they are great fortune, great fortune. So how can say they are fortunate? So Jan Mitram Paramananda, Sri Krishna, they are friend, they are son, they are, they are beloved. In this way, Sri Krishna is all in all. All Brajavasis, they have love and affection in home. In this way, they always give you their love and affection. So Sri Krishna forgot all airplanes mood and he playing with friends. He is playing, he becomes baby and the they is always taking their this mood and testing their mood. In this way Sri Krishna also very happy and always be happy. So I pray to Sri Krishna, oh Sri Krishna, so you gave liberation, more than liberation, dhatri gati, gati to putana. So I can't understand. What is giving you to Brajavasi? So everything you gave. So in this way you have nothing to give, give to Brajavasi. You gave to Brajavasi. So in this way you become their child, their son, their friend and their beloved. So I pray to you, so I can take what in prayer for me, like a stone. In this way he prayed again and again, more more, and did parikram there. Then he went from there. At that time all friends, they told, oh, Choma, 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 four, four headers, four headers. <laughs> so wonderful things they never seen before, we are from God. Then they laughed. Also, Sri Krishna stand there and give his hand to one friend. So, very beautiful form, attractive to everyone, to Prajavasi. And also, Brahma prayed to Sri Krishna and Brahma went from there. 
this is Brahma Moha Lila. So, Sri Krishna gave place to Brahma. So, Hare Krishna now Brahma play, Guru is going on our short term. Guru is down there. After fire sacrifice, she has collected Diksha for Srila Guru Dev. When Guru is down, please offer to Srila Guru Dev. And I am requesting all audience, keep somewhere that who collected the arms will come and offer to Srila Guru Dev Diksha. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So while Guru Dev is going uh, down and we are preparing for the drama, I have some important announcements to make. So please uh, keep sitting. Uh, we have these nice sarees which the ladies were wearing on the first day. So anyone who might want to purchase, there are a few of them left for $108 each. You can contact uh, Aarti or Vinodini Didi. So Aarti and Vinodini Didi, if you can stand up, they can see whom they can contact for sarees. So you can con if anyone wants to buy the saree, you can contact them. Also tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow there is going to be Hari Nam in downtown Houston. Hari So tomorrow Hari Nam in downtown Houston, 11 o'clock in the morning, and. The address is at the intersection of Lamar Street and Main Street. There is a Macy's store. In front of them the devotees will gather. There is also enough parking there. You can park easily 11 o'clock tomorrow morning at the intersection of Lamar and Main Street in front of Macy's. If anyone needs more directions, specific directions, you can please contact Pran Govinda Prabhu. So everyone should come and join. The uh, <coughs> Nagar Sankirtan in downtown Houston tomorrow. Also, those who want shuttle service to the airport, please give your names to uh, Roy Krishna Prabhu or anyone sitting at the refreshment table outside the Prashadam Hall. There, there is a meeting of all. Can everyone please just settle down? Okay, let's see. <laughs>